So welcome guys to the BizHack Live webinar series. I'm really excited to be hosting. Uh, this is Dan Gretsch. I'm the founder of BizHack Academy, where we train businesses in digital marketing. Um, and uh, I wanted to start by talking about something that has come up a lot over the last few weeks. Um, the coronavirus is uh, impacting every business and every person in the country but it is not impacting us all equally. Um, not only is the coronavirus uh, disproportionately impacting in terms of getting individuals sick, uh, blacks and Latinos, but it's also disproportionately impacting the businesses that they own. Uh, this was a New York Times headline uh, just er last month that black owned businesses are the most hard hit by the impact of the coronavirus. It was because of reports like this that BizHack launched a minority scholarship program in support of cohort 14, the five week course that we launched on Monday of this week. And I wanted to report back to you what results we got. We had more than 180 people apply for the program. 27 of them were accepted into the program. We were very selective uh, about who we let in. And of those 27, uh, more than $24,000 in scholarships were given. Um, this is just one very concrete way in which BizHack stands in solidarity to entrepreneurs of color and the black community. Uh, and we wanna put our money where our mouth is. So I'm very proud uh, of the caliber and quality of the applicants and of the work that we're doing, our small part in trying to help us reach equity in this country and give folks a leg up. So I just wanted to report back to you uh, on that program. And um, we're gonna be talking at the end, uh, we're, wanna, we're gonna launch this again for cohort 15, which starts in September. So thanks to all of you for helping spread the word. Some of you maybe even applied. Um, we really appreciate all that you've done to help the world know about what we're trying to do at BizHack to lift up small businesses using online lead generation and digital marketing. Our next course starts September 8th. It's a five week accelerated course in how to adapt your marketing. And if you are interested in applying for a scholarship for that program, we have opened back up the scholarships. This is for both minority and women owned businesses as well as minority professionals. Um, this includes Hispanics. Um, and if you're interested in applying or even just learning more and having a conversation with someone at BizHack, go to try.bizhack.com slash scholarship. And um, what my partner, Lilia, she'll put this link into the chat in case anybody is interested in applying or know someone who would benefit. Today, we're gonna talk with Allison Goldberg. She's the head of marketing at the Related Group about how they adapted. Um, we've given a lot of, uh, over the 14, this is the 15th session we've done in how to adapt your marketing due to COVID-19. And over the course of these many sessions, we've talked a lot uh, about how to adapt your marketing and we've given you lessons and case studies. Today, we're gonna dive deep. We're gonna talk with Allison about the specific things that she did starting in March of this year, she and her team to basically rewrite their marketing and sales model um, and uh, how the um, work that was done has allowed them to survive and even thrive in this environment. Many of you already know me. My name is Dan Gretsch and I'm the founder of BizHack and also a journalist uh, who is kind of finding his sweet spot as a digital marketing educator and a little bit of a broadcaster to boot. Uh, they used to say when I worked at NPR that I had a face for radio. So uh, this webinar format is a little bit different. You get to see me in my full red-faced glory. Um, so Allison. Allison's going to talk to us about three things today. We're going to talk about the impact of COVID-19 on the real estate industry. And I would invite any of you guys in the chat, uh, do any of you work in real estate? If so, put it in the chat. We'd love to know what element of real estate you do. Um, Allison is someone who works at all levels of real estate, but primarily as uh, on behalf of a developer. Um, and we'll talk a little bit more about what she is seeing from a developer's perspective 
uh, but also in the rental and ownership market, both at the high end luxury and in the affordable. Um, so uh, yeah, I know there are a couple of folks and colleagues of um, Allison's on the line as well. So now's a great time also for you to send your love to her uh, through our chat. We like to have this be as interactive as possible and to hear from as many of you as we can. It makes it more fun for everybody. So Allison's gonna talk, Allison's gonna talk about the impact of COVID-19 on the real estate industry. She's then gonna talk uh, about how the real related group under her leadership has pivoted its marketing and sales in response. Uh, and she's had to get really deep into the weeds in some of these things, even getting down to even trailing sale, training sales representatives and how to uh, deal uh, in this new ma uh, marketing environment. Uh, Alejandra, we love you too. <laughs> we have uh, Adolfo Serafin, who's a developer, and Tatiana Kala, who does digital marketing. And then we're gonna talk about how the related group is bringing digital marketing in-house by building its own agency. And I, I actually know a lot about this. I've done some work with the related group on this effort uh, and they're doing really cutting edge innovative things. And for any medium to large businesses uh, on this webinar, uh, really they're providing a very interesting and somewhat unusual model for essentially how to build an in-house agency to become and to have their different properties become clients of their own agency rather than an outside agency. And we'll, show, we'll talk about what the benefits of that are. Uh, number one, it's cheaper. And number two, it's more responsive. And number three, it has better industry expertise. So it's been kind of a win, win, win. Um, they're getting better service for less money and they're gonna build out that model as they go. So let's talk about Allison for a second. I wanted to start by talking about Allison's past because I'm not sure how much of this will come up in conversation, but it's a really impressive one. You can see a lot of bold faced names here. Saks Fifth Avenue, she worked uh, at a PR firm uh, doing McDonald's community outreach and she really helped build up Miami's design district for DACRA into what it has become today. And all of this really goes back to what I would say is Allison's core expertise, which is how, can, how real estate and community development can intersect. And I do definitely wanted to, this is almost like a, a message for Allison I really wanna make sure that when we talk, that we think about this intersection between community and real estate, because it is it is business and it is numbers and it is growth and it is how to pivot. Um, but it's also about using homes as a way to, you know, create community and to provide shelter, one of the most fundamental things in this time of terrible insecurity, you're in like one of the essentials businesses. and I. I wanted to kind of remind us all about that and make sure that that grounds our conversation. Because in the end, marketing is about people to people, human to human, and so is real estate. Well, okay, now let's talk about the numbers. Allison is frankly a badass. She um, oversees all aspects of marketing for 70 projects with a combined $65 million budget uh, internationally across five divisions. She really has one of the most comprehensive views uh, of real estate from a marketing perspective of anyone I know and I look to her as kind of a guide whenever I have questions about how real estate marketing is changing and it's changing every day as we're going to learn. Uh, I also uh, am happy to say that we both have uh, M uh, masters from FIU, so go Panthers, uh, and she also has an undergraduate degree from University of Miami. Go Canes. Right. Yeah, <laughs> go, go Canes. Go Canes. Um, I, you know, I have thoroughly embarrassed you with this introduction, so yes. I'm going to take the screen down and we're going to begin a conversation. <laughs> um, welcome, Allison. Thank you. So before we get started in the nuts and bolts of this, I did want to have you reflect a little bit about community and real estate and how that thread is tied together your entire career. Well, I, I mean, it's been tied together my entire career, but I, I think I'm so blessed to be here at the Related Group and to work with um, George Perez um, and the entire team here because obviously, you know, redefining um, cities and skylines and reshaping communities is at the forefront of everything he does um, and everything we do here. Um, and I'm so fortunate and blessed, you know, not only to work on all of our 
fancy condo projects and, and, and rental projects and internationally. I mean, I saw Alejandra's here. She's a partner of mine um, in Mexico, one of with our Mexican um, partners, Immobilia. So that's so exciting. I mean, I, I work with the best and the brightest, but I think it's so humbling and exciting for me, you know, to work closely also in addition to all the 70 projects I manage, but to work um, as a part of our foundation, you know, and, and the philanthropy and what um, related and George Perez give back to this community um, has just been amazing and, and incredible for me. Um, so that, you know, really one of the things I, um, looked at when I came here to Related was, was the fact that that I could have work with someone and have an opportunity to to make change and that was really cool um, and then you know kind of on that sort of grassroots level to your point you know we provide shelter um, we provide shelter across the board I, I, I will never forget you know um, it was this crazy day for me but I started off you know at one of our top condo projects, you know, where the, the condos are going for, you know, millions, eight million, eight point five million dollars. And then I was at Liberty Square and I was working in the community and we were renaming buildings and I was at um you know, involved in community meetings. So, and then, you know, I was in Tampa because we have a large um, affordable housing project there and and got to know the residents and meet the residents and you know know that what we are doing um, is making a difference in someone's life. It's just incredible a across the board, you know? So you, you've got this condo owner that is so excited to move into their double penthouse, you know? And then you've got, um, you know, the, the, the community where, where you know, a, a one one uh, a, that, that is government subsidized, uh, that's beautiful and safe and secure, um, makes a difference. I mean, it, it's so humbling and I, I'm so thrilled and honored to, to be a part of this wonderful organization. You know, let's take a minute and, and pause on this because George Perez has obviously been a very important philanthropist in the community. He's an art, uh, an art collector and, and, and named the art museum. And real estate is not particularly well known for philanthropy. Philanthropy, And I will say, I, I talk to a lot of realtors and they're very motivated by the idea that they're giving someone a home to live in. So there's sort of a disconnect by like the George Perez's of the world mm -hmm. and that lived reality of the on the ground realtor who's like literally finding shelter for families yeah. and how that's so motivating to them. Yeah. And I'd love for you to just reflect a little bit more, because this is really about marketing, about how from the top your messaging about philanthropy and giving back is filtering down to your leasing agents and your real estate team so that there's the right spirit behind that transaction, that lease. Yeah, I mean, I think it's woven into the fabric of everything we do. Um, so, it, you know, you're part of this team and it's a part of the DNA, um, you know, and every single building, whether it be our affordable job in um, Liberty Square or our top condo job is infused with art. Um, you know, the notion that um, beautiful homes and public art should not just be for the wealthy. It should be for everyone. Everybody should enjoy art and be able to be a collector in a sense. So we really do infuse all of our projects with that. I mean, one of the things we've started since I've been here is a series of books called the Provenance Books. Um, and for every single project that we complete, we do a, a book and we share this gorgeous art collection with all of the residents. It's a coffee table book and it lists all the pieces um, in the building and who the artist is so that they can really have a sense of pride um, about the art that they're living with and understand it. So I think that that's one of the sort of what makes the related group and makes my job so special and, and exciting is that, you know, it's woven into this fabric. It just, it appears. It's part of who we are. And the exciting thing is you'll talk to the art department and you know, really we, we um, 
George and the art team, we have two full-time art curators and they travel around the world looking for emerging artists um, to buy pieces from to in put in our buildings. So, I mean, it's kind of exciting and, and, and interesting and everybody, it should be for everyone. And that's part of what we do. Even this happens not only in our condo jobs, our rental jobs, and even down to our affordable jobs. Everybody should live with beauty amongst art and everybody should, should be a part of it and be privy to it. Yeah. Well, thank you for sharing that. And, you know, I, I, I think it'll really ground the rest of the conversation. So, okay. Um, you know, we go on lockdown in early March and real estate, you know, a big part of your portfolio is lease ups, is, is leasing rental apartments. And I mean, we're talking at a scale that for anyone in real estate in the room, it, it, we're talking about a lot of units. Uh, and a lot of buildings and a lot of markets. Um, and your primary mode of sales is nose to nose, right? Your people want to see the place and they want to meet a human being because this is one of the biggest purchases, you know, uh, decision, uh, you know, one of the biggest money decisions anyone can make in their life, right? This is going to account for anywhere from a quarter to a half of their salary. So suddenly your primary mode of sales is off the table. Yep. What happens? What happens next at the related group? What? What is? All you hell breaks loose, honey. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. All hell breaks loose, and and we sort of go into this, what you know, crisis mode. You know, what do we do? How do we do this? Business can't stop. Um, you know, so we really sort of said our traditional means, and one of the things we're really good at is you know, that one-on-one -on -one contact, as you say, you know, coming into our sales centers, our leasing galleries, you know, offering coffee, offering about, you know, just hospitality and service. You know, we provide a level of service. Um, and how do you take that level of service and bring that into this contactless world that we're now living in, into this new normal? I mean, and obviously it's a familiar for to you, Dan, is technology. I mean, we had to rely so heavily on technology. Um, you know, and, and we started with, oh my God, we need 3, 3D tours. We need right. 3D tours. We need to be able to bring our buildings to the potential client, like, you know, the renter or the buyer. We need to, we need to do that. So we- What's a 3D tour? So a 3D tour is where you are able to actually take a physical tour of a property. Um, it's virtual. So it's virtual. They come in and they stitch all the pieces together and you can walk through the property virtually. Um, so we had done a few, but we hadn't finished all of them. So we, we kicked it into high gear and we ended up getting all within two weeks, every single property filmed and edited and you know got all of our virtual tours posted that was one then we said oh my god we need video we need video content you know we need not just still pictures so we moved into creating videos for all of our properties um it's particularly on, we had them on our condo side but not on the rental side so we took still pictures and we stitched them all together and we utilized you know our in-house team thank god we built one um because, you know, we were able to act fast and get those going, you know, and finally, I mean, we just went grassroots down to the basics, FaceTime, virtual tours from having a leasing agent contact the client say, okay, you know, because the leasing agents were allowed to be in the building and offering virtual tours via FaceTime, via WhatsApp, um, and, uh, you know, by any other means, Zoom, right. Teams, you know, and, 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 and then, so we did all of that. And then what we were finding was, okay, well, we implemented everything, but our teams were struggling. We weren't leasing. Right. And why weren't we leasing? And, and why, why weren't we getting, making our, we were having the tours, people were coming in. Um, you know, I can tell you that March 15th, you know, we had uh, 
or you know, March, let's say the week of March 22nd, you know, we did not, we had 94 visits, virtual visits. Um, you know, and and but the numbers, you know, we only leased in the teens. That's not normal for us. I mean, right. normally for us, we're in the 80s. So I I said, oh my God, well, what's happening here? Well, what was really happening was we provided all the technology, we provided all the tools, but if you don't know how to use them, then that doesn't work either. And, you know, it's very different when you are having an in-person meeting or you're showing someone and you can have this dialogue with them as opposed to um, virtually, you know, using technology, using a phone to walk through. So right. we kind of went back to the basics and I spent um, probably, you know, the course of, of a month Right. Every single day I had trainings with the team. I, we did role playing. Give me a tour. How does it look like? What does it look like? You know, and I would say, you know, and, and everybody, it's so interesting. You know, you, you go through this and it's so interesting. These people were afraid to talk about COVID. They were afraid. And I said, guys, you got to address the elephant in the room and make the client feel comfortable say, listen, I know this must be really challenging. Like the thought of moving during COVID must be really scary, but I want you to know that we're doing all these things. We're cleaning, we're wearing face masks, we're eliminating the number of people in the elevators, um, you know, so that you make the client feel comfortable. I mean, to me, this is like, you know, yes, I do all these things from a big marketing perspective, but it was just the basics. You know, and then after all the training, we, we, we got into a groove and then we get into this groove. P.S. We realized that some of the model units didn't have Wi-Fi. And the technology doesn't work if you don't have Wi-Fi. Right. So, you know, it was facing all, encountering all of these things and how do you deal with it? Within a week, we had contact contacted IT and we partnered together and we got Wi-Fi you know and so much so that now moving forward all of our buildings will have Wi-Fi in the common areas and in the um, model units to help combat that and deal with that but you know it's you get hit from all angles so let, let me kind of dig in here a little bit um, first of all you're a marketer why are you dealing with sales well, sales and marketing go hand in hand, right? So, I mean, I, I think when I first came to Related, you know, I remember um, Carlos Rosso, the president of the condominium division, said something very interesting. There was an aspiring um, developer, a young developer, and they didn't have a position for him in the development. So he came with me and he started to work with me because I needed the help. And, he, and Carlos said to him, my friend, if you don't have sales, you have nothing to build. And so that was really sort of the idea is that if, if we, I can market it, I can bring you the people, but if you don't know how to sell them and close them, then it doesn't work. So I shifted a little bit and sort of put, you know, my thinking cap on it said, how can I help drive this train? And it's training and working with people. So right. That's kind of how that happened. And it, the other question, you know, how, how, how were you able to know how to, like, how were you able to suss out the training was an issue uh, at the ground level since you weren't able to physically be there? Were you, were you just not seeing results or how, how did you suss that out? I mean, I was just, I wasn't seeing the results. I mean, you know, we say, um, Steve Patterson always says, and Steve Patterson is the president of our multifamily division. And Steve always says there's the three P's, price, product, and personnel. And one of the three P's, if one of the three P's isn't working, then something's wrong. So I knew that, I know, I always know the products there because we always build the best product, right? I mean, hands down. Um, Pricing, I mean, we were offering concessions and, you know, gift cards, and we really, I, our pricing was in line. 
Well, that only leaves the third P is your personnel. So for me, it was, we got to, we, something's not right. So I asked a few um, of the teams to give me a virtual tour. And I said, Oh, that's where, that's where the issue lies. I mean, and you know, I, I think you and I had this call. I mean, we, in eight, in March, we did the week of the 22nd, we did leases in the teams. And by mid um, May, we were in the seventies net. Wow. In the middle of COVID. So, you know, and you're, and I always say this, you're only as good as your people. You're only as good as, as your people. And, and so that was really, we just went to the basics. Yeah. Um, what has happened in real estate since March and specifically Let's just focus on, you, you oversee a lot of different types of projects, but let's focus specifically in the leasing market, mm -hmm. um, the rental market, uh, you know, because I think in some ways this is a little bit of a bellwether um, of sort of where demand is. Uh, this is residential rentals. Um, yeah. I, I know you um, have some stats about this and it's really interesting because what you can see is you can almost trace daily you know, the, the arc of this, of this continuing and, and frankly exploding pandemic yep. in South Florida based on these numbers. And so yep. what I'd love to do is let's take a few minutes and let's look at the numbers in like a narrative way. So we'll start in March and we'll say, okay, the numbers were here and this is what was happening. And then we saw the numbers have do this and this is what was happening. Yep. And now the numbers are here and this is what we think is happening. Yep. So, I mean, I think in March, you know, everyone was really concerned. We were, we, we were on lockdown, you know, we were locked down. We were whole up in our apartments, houses, you know, but yet we still had to do business, which was scary. It was very scary. Um, you know, and, and the numbers went down and then as, as the restrictions started to ease and people started to feel more comfortable, you know, it was hurry up. We got to do in-person touring. Um, and we saw that sort of happening in May, you know, where we're right. some up in the northern parts in Atlanta. We've got projects in Atlanta and, and Tampa. We started to see the easing of restrictions. We started seeing people wanting to come out, wanting to um, get into the buildings, you know, and, and, and implemented a whole series of, of protocols. Um, from you know signing an agreement to you know temperature checks to masks to have to have the garbage i mean it was very detailed what we went through um hand in hand with legal um to get ourselves in a place where we could do contactless um in-person tours so we saw a big big you know a, a big jump when we did that um you know, and then now when I'm seeing it's been red alarm, you know, five alarm fire in the last two weeks, um, we're seeing the numbers across the board from a leasing perspective go down. Um, and, you know, I've spent the last greater part of this week coming up with a solution for that. You know, what does that look like? What can we do? Um, and why, why, I mean, this might be obvious, but you know, what, what I think we're, we were seeing was when this hot spot was New York, mm -hmm. New York and South Florida, not all your properties in South Florida, but many of them are, uh, there's like a real link between the New York, South Florida markets. Yeah, for sure. Um, you know, a link that you might see between like Chicago and Naples, you know, there are yeah. different like, almost like streams. And one of the things we saw is a lot of people in New York were really unhappy and really scared. The, the, and they left and they, um, what was the statistic you said about the number of people that were at the height moving down here? Do you remember that? Oh, I don't remember. It was like I mean, tens of thousands of people. Yes. yes. Streaming down here and bringing COVID with them, by the way. Yes. <laughs> and so what ended up happening is we got COVID uh, in a big way, in part because of that and for other reasons. And so now it's, it's exploding here and New York is locked, is, is doing much better. And you can almost see that, slow down 
of the New York expat in your leasing numbers? Well, it's been very interesting because, you know, we, there's two weeks ago, you know, people assigned or they applied and they filled out the lease and then um, they filled out a lease, but now they're sort of hesitant to sign it because of all the exploding cases here. So it's been, um, you know, it's been interesting. And I, and I, what I said to the team this week is we got to go back to the basics. We got to go back to um, making our clients feel comfortable, you know, and reminding them of all the things that we're doing to ensure that they're safe and our employees are safe. So, um, you know, the messaging this week is really just going back to where we were in March, which is, it's okay, you can come to our property, you can tour our property because we're safe and because we're cleaning and because we're wearing masks. And not only that, but you wanna live in one of our properties because we genuinely care about our residents. And these are all the things we're doing. We're ex we've hired extra cleaning staff. You know, we have, we have package runners now where you don't even come down and get your package. Your package comes to your door. Um, you know, we're not allowing delivery personnel in the building. So we are implementing a whole set of um, procedures and protocols to ensure that everybody is safe. Yeah. And by the way, one of the things I want, you, you, you keep hearing this, but I wanna just make a larger marketing point. The number one value that you need to be providing is safety right now. Everyone feels very unsafe and every business needs to think about this. Um, so like for BizHack, you know, safety means um, having ways to get new customers in a safe way, right? And online is it. Um, or, or really important, more important than ever before, right? Um, you know, for, um, for the related group, it's how that we can safely, um, you know, sh tour the property, but we can also keep you safe once you live here. So, so safety uh, as a marketer has become uh, an absolutely essential tool. And so when you're doing these like fancy pantsy 3D tours, part of what you're messaging is we take safety really seriously and we're not gonna put you unnecessarily at risk by forcing you to come and do an in-person tour when we have a technology that we can use that will get you there. I feel the same way, like we don't do in-person classes anymore. I noticed someone pointed out to me, it says in-person classes, I'm gonna to have to get this updated. But we don't do in-person classes anymore and it's not because I don't love in-person, it's because it's unsafe to. And until I can guarantee the safety of my instructors and my, my students, there's no way we're gonna go back to in-person. So it's it, safety you know, keeps coming up and it's incredibly important. If you had to put something as the number two on the list of, and this is a hard question I know, okay. of what is the most important sort of objection or selling point in the post COVID era? What would you say it is? Hmm. Um, you know, I think what we've also, I think for us really has been, you know, in, aside from safety, you know, value. You know, I think people want um, to have really good value. They want to feel like they're getting, you know, the best value for their dollar. I think everyone is much more dollar conscious um, more so now than they ever were before. And I would say, that's what I would say. Yeah, I knew, I knew you were going to go there. It's it, nobody, nobody has money. Right. So nobody has money. And, and this is the, one of their largest expenses. So, yep. you, you, so, so let's talk about that for a sec. How do you, let's talk about, you know, you have different sizes of the market, right? You have the affordable housing side and then the luxury side and probably stuff in between. How do you, approach pricing in a way that doesn't devalue the product, but is responsive to the real need in your potential lessees? You know, I sort of, I really do leave that up to the developers to decide. I really... Um, so explain what you mean. Each building has a developer. Each and building has a developer and we have a, you know, a vice president of revenue management and they work through all of that. And then they 
they send it to me and I kind of um, go with it from there. Uh, you know, but, but I think that, you know, they're very cognizant of it. And, and, you know, I think the, 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 the true, the true thing about, about related and what we do is, you know, we really do care about our, our people and our, you know, and, 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 you know, even so Dan, to your, to your point about safety and, and, um, you know, what are we doing? You know, we are known for the communities that we create. So we started this conversation off of, by talking about community. And one of the things that we are absolutely known for is our is building a community. When you live in a related building and you live in a, a building, um, one of our rental buildings, you know, we say that nobody does it better and, and we are known for our events and we are known for curating um, residents resident events and, and getting everyone together so you truly feel connected. And that was a really big challenge for us too. How do we maintain that sense of community when you can't be together? Um, so one of the things we did is, you know, in addition to all this, you know, from a leasing perspective, but let's talk about our people, you know, the people living in our buildings. One of the things that we did was we moved to virtual events and we did cooking classes. We did yoga. We started bringing in, if you believe this, musicians to play on the pool deck. So we had patio parties where everyone could go out onto their patio and have a happy hour. Um, and, you know, I was so thrilled and honored to just a few weeks ago, we had the national face designer for Armani Cosmetics who travels all over the world um, doing makeup for celebrities. She actually hosted two virtual events for us. Oh, wow. So, um, I, you know, I love, gosh, I love the idea of a balcony party. And, and you know, I think I'm thinking now of, um, you know, I was at a, a condo and there was someone playing music. Yeah. And it just like echoed through the whole yeah. and everybody came out and you saw those pictures from Italy and, people on the rooftops in New York, yeah. and, you know, music in that setting could really, you know, maybe even, you know, be one of the most powerful ways to bring people together. I love that. Did you ever incorporate music into those? Yes. Yeah, so we did, we had the patio party. So what we would do is set up a saxophone player or a singer or a DJ on the pool deck. And we would invite all the residents to come out onto their balconies and enjoy the music. Um, in some instances, we partnered up with some local um, restaurants and they provided us cocktails, which we delivered to every door that signed up. So it was truly a virtual happy hour. So I want to give a little plug to Eleanor Ho. Eleanor is known as the Walk Star, W O K. And um, she is my guru for all things walks. Um, and so uh, I, you know, the um, the uh, you know, as you're thinking about different types of programming, someone who she might be a, a great uh, resource to you. There were uh, and, and Eleanor, you can. There's some of her team on the the line if you want to sort of put your info in. But there were two questions, uh, one from Way and one from Ramon, that are actually a great segue for the next part of our conversation. Okay. The way asked in the real estate industry, developers tend to rely on agents a lot. Which ones do you focus on more digital marketing agents or in-house sales team? And just to be, uh, to put a little bit of more detail around that, a lot of times developers will like outsource to like Fortune or other outside real estate mm -hmm. companies the selling um, and other developers will keep it in-house. Um, and uh, that model, is, it, it, which model do you guys have and how do you think about um, digital marketing agents and realty partners? So we do both, um, we do both. So a lot of times on our condo sales, we do partner with outside sales agencies. So as you mentioned, Fortune or related ISG, um, sometimes we have an in-house team so we, it just depends on what we do. I mean, um, on our condo, in our condo division, you know, it's very heavily broker driven. Right. Um, you know, and on our rental side, um, you know, we have a management company called TRG Management. They manage all of our properties for us and they're really responsible for um, sales and marketing. Um, so, and 
to your point, I kind of have, um, we talked about it earlier, you know, how do you get into this whole sales piece? But the truth is, is that, you know, they don't have a proper marketing, they don't have a marketing director right now. And so, you know, I just kind of slid right in there and, and, you know, you do what you got to do to help out, but we do, we do, we do it both ways. Um, you know, and, and we do a lot of broker outreach. So we just launched a new project in Pompano beach called Solimar. We have an in-house sales team. And, you know, I find when I, you know, we do a lot of broker outreach. So we, our materials, um, our materials for that, you know, we do branded and unbranded. And when you do branded, marketing materials that has all of our contact information but we do a lot of unbranded materials so that our brokers any broker can brand it with their information you know on the on the condo side you know we're happy we pay commission and we're happy to do that on the rental side we try to do that less because the margins are a lot smaller so you know we we want that that's why you know um Thanks to you, Dan. You know you've helped us really build out our digital department. Um, many of them are on the on this um, webinar chat today, and you know I I, I really have to say that um, I am blessed to work with an incredible team. Um, you know, and 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 we're talking about me, but I, I really have to shout out the entire team on this call. They're all here: Erica and Tati and Gio and Patty and Danny. I mean, they're they have really. Um, been amazing throughout all of this, you know, on a Memorial Day weekend, they work till seven o'clock to get, you know, on a Friday to get things going. And, and you know, I'm, I'm just so blessed to have all of them with us because they make it happen. Um, yeah, so I, I really had to say that. Yeah, no, and I'm glad you did. It's a great team, guys, go ahead and uh, send your love uh, on the on the chat. And while you're doing that, let me, let me kind of step back for a second and explain, you know, when you're a developer and you're selling, you know, condos or especially, as you said, rentals, you have kind of two paths and they can work in parallel. One is to essentially outsource that to a real estate a realty company. And the other is to keep it in house and market it and have the folks come directly to your own dedicated agents. The benefit of doing it in house um, is that um, you get to save on the commission you would have otherwise paid. The downside is most developers are not very good at marketing um, and they have, they don't have the kind of experience that real estate brokers do of marketing and a huge network and a history of doing that. And so what big developers are starting to do, and I've worked with several of them now is they're starting to build up for the first time an in-house marketing capacity to allow them particularly to market their lower margin products like the rentals. And this, turns me to the work that you and I are doing together with the help of Geo and the others, which is when we started working together, you primarily, you, you, you had an in-house sales team, but you had primarily outsourced the marketing. So we always out, I mean, so here's kind of, you know, we outsourced the marketing, but we were, I think, light years behind on the digital marketing. Um, you know, when you and I first met, I mean, I first met Dan and Dan kind of looked at me and said, huh, you know, how, huh, how's this going to work? This, 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 this model that you're thinking is never works. I said, it's going to work, you know, where the digital department lives in it because that's how I can pay for them. I got to just get them here. And then you know, they technically work under marketing. So it's been a very, it's been very interesting. So the way we kind of say it is the, the head of IT is um, the CEO and I'm the client. <laughs> and that's kind of how we've really worked it. But it's, you know, Dan said, that's never going to work. It never works when digital marketing is in the IT department. I said, it's going to work. It has to work. I don't have a choice. Um, and, and it's just, you know, let me, let me pause you real quick. A lot of the reason why I say that is because marketing is human to human and technologists and IT people tend to be all about the, the zeros and the ones. And the reason it does, it, it does work at Related. And the reason it does is because of the incredible trust relationship that you have with your head of IT and the fact that you really stay in your lanes and yes. that he sees himself as a service provider to you. Yes. Um, and that you see yourself as his client. Yeah. So 
what, what has happened because you structured it this way is you have built a very innovative model for marketing, which is you, you charge your individual developers to get services from marketing. Very franchises use this model. IT uses this model. It's an agency model. And so like, you know, I was working with Geo the other day on like, what are the different price point options that developers can pick from? Like as if they were an agency client. But what's cool is when you're in house, they're much more responsive, right? They're working on, on, a, on a Friday at 7 p.m. before a week, holiday weekend. Number two is they know your industry inside and out because they work for you. And number three is they're cheaper, right? Because- and I would add a fourth. I would add a fourth. They know the industry, but you know, so interesting with creatives, it's more like an agency because they don't get bored because I am marketing, you know, they've got to pivot from, you know, a high, high-end condo all the way down to a affordable project. So, you know, we're constantly evolving, but, you know, I think that we were able to be so successful and to pivot um, quickly, you know, we're nimble. And the reason why we're nimble is because I have this incredible team um, that can um, adapt. And if I didn't have them in house, we wouldn't have been able to adapt. So, you know, what, what, where we are now is, you know, what I've done is for the larger big marketing campaigns, concepts, you know, big idea, I will usually farm it out to an agency. And I have the agency come up with this big idea. Um, and then we, after the big idea has been created, then we'll take it on in-house and the day-to-day -day we crank out. I get e-blasts, you know, for projects once a week, um, you know, changes to simple changes to the internet, you know, websites that need to be made. We do it all in house. So it allows us to move quick, quickly and, and effectively and be efficient. Um, and, and that model has really worked for us, you know, so we develop the big, big branding ideas, marketing ideas, you know, um, with an agency. But then after the agency does that, we bring it all in house and take it on from there, which I wasn't doing before. So an e-blast could take it a week to 10 days. So this has been um, incredible for us. Um, yeah. And the other thing too, I will say is, and what's been awesome for me is that, you know, George Perez has a passion for marketing. Hmm. That is his passion. Is that true? It, I'm not lying to you, Dang Gretch. I had no idea. He's absolutely, I mean, I, you've interviewed him a million times. I can't believe you didn't get there. But in any event, George's passion is his art. Right. His marketing. Oh, and wow. he, um, you know, has an eye for all of it and is very involved, um, yes. you know, in strategy meetings, planning sessions. You know, I get it to a point where I think he's going to like it. Um, and approve of it, and then we present all of it to him. Um, so it's really interesting and amazing to work with someone who's so passionate about it. You know, we're building this new office building, and I was like praying I was going to go on the next floor, you know, but nope, he's got the art department and the marketing department out his door. <laughs> those are his two favorites. You know, I did, I did not know that, actually. I really appreciate you sharing that, because um, it, I think it does provide a little bit of insight. You know, when I interviewed just to be completely upfront about it. And I, I think actually this is a story that George can be proud of. When I interviewed George Perez, it was when I was a journalist, not a marketer. And the question that I was asking him is, what does it feel like to lose a billion dollars? Because this was back in 2008, and it was in the news that he'd lost a billion dollars, related had. Now, look where he is back today. I mean, what makes him amazing is his resilience and the market shifted and he shifted with it and he lost a lot of money and he found a way to make it back. But what's really cool is I did not know he was into marketing, but that really explains a lot of how he was able to build it back. Because I will tell you, again, among developers and in business owners in general, they are not interested in marketing. They find marketing is, a, is, a, is a, either a necessary evil or a distraction or a money hole, not an engine of growth. And so it actually makes a lot of sense to me now that you've had the success that you've had 
that you're able to pivot in the way that you are because precisely you have executive level buy-in yeah. and interest. Uh, Ramon Bryan asked a really great question. Hey, Ramon. Um, and how has your overall marketing strategy, execution, creative changed or evolved since COVID-19? And it's a really broad question. So I'm going to just kind of ask it slightly differently, which is, have you noticed any marketing channels that have become suddenly more productive? And are there any other marketing channels that are dead in the water, like events? No, no. Um, well, yes and no. So that like, yes and no. Um, you know, it's very interesting. I'm very excited because uh, just 10 minutes before our call, I'd gotten off a call. We launched a new condo job called Solimar, and it's really our first condo project that um, we can utilize this full scale digital marketing approach to. And I will tell you that we already have two sales directly associated with our digital outreach, our digital marketing. Right. And that's unheard of. So that to me is so exciting. So yes, have we had to pivot? Yes. I mean, where we were doing broker presentations and um, you know, driving people to the sales center through events um, big time. But so we really have utilized technology. To me, events aren't dead. Um, I, you know, come from an event background, um, and you know, we're already thinking of this pre numbers exploding again. You know, what types of small, intimate, contactless events can we do? Because I think people do want to get out, but they do want to feel safe. So it's change. I mean, three days before or a week before um, a week before the pandemic, you know, and before everything shut down, we, we opened Armani. We did a, the residence by Armani Casa in Sunny Isles. We did a full runway uh, Armani fashion show that they brought from Milan along with a, a Pitbull concert. Wow. Uh, and, you know, everybody says it was the pre COVID lockdown party, you know, and so, and it was phenomenal, phenomenal. But it's not that we're moving away from events. We're just shifting into, I see you, Dan Gretsch. <laughs> next one, next one. But we were so, you know, um, it was incredible. So are, we move, are events dead in the water? No. They look, they're going to look different. Yes. They're going to look different, just like, you know, in the concert business, trying to figure out, you know, do you do like open air venues or do you do drive-in concerts? You know, not, I don't think anything is dead in the water. I think it's all, it's up to all of us to be innovative. And I think that COVID has provided us with an opportunity to be innovative. And when I get the calls from the developers now screaming, why don't I have traffic and get me more leases instead of, feeling defeated or, or feeling frustrated by it, I look at it as a new challenge. Um, a new challenge, how, 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 how do we market? How do we drive business in this time? And it's all about innovation. Yeah. You know, I, I wanna end there because that is the mantra of this webinar series. COVID has given us the opportunity to be innovative. Um, I know that when we were a little earlier in the crisis, we talked about that the, the, the famous quote that the Chinese symbols for crisis uh, um, have two meanings. Uh, there are two symbols. Um, one of them is danger and the other is opportunity. And the danger is manifest. We all see it. We all know it's there. The opportunity takes a little bit of a mindset shift, but it's there as present as the danger. And so I just want to say thank you for sharing us how you grasped the opportunity. Thank you, Dan. It was very, you know, um, I was, I'm honored. I'm honored to uh, be here and to have this format to talk about what I really do love to do um, and I'm passionate about. And again, you know, all my family and friends and, and the team in particular, and the team in particular, again, I, I am honored and humbled to work with all of you. Um, you know, because I say this all the time, you're only as good as your team. 
and I am so unbelievably blessed to work with the best and you know, for their support every day, because I know I'm not easy. I push, I push, I push myself and I push the team almost till we're going to break, but, and I know it, but I know that we're capable of it and what we've accomplished in these past few months is nothing short of amazing. So I'll just end it there and say that I'm really blessed and, and grateful um, to my team and to have this opportunity to share what I love to do. Yeah. Well, bravo. I've had the benefit of working firsthand with your team. I know how hard you push them and I know how they respond uh, with elevating their performance. And I'm honored to be a part of that. So I wanted to tell you guys, uh, we're going to take a little bit of a break of these weekly webinar series, but not too much. Um, our next one is going to be on uh, August 12th. Uh, it'll actually be the graduation party of the uh, cohort 14 that just started on Monday. So very excited about that. The week after that, uh, we're going to be talking for the first time about customer retention, right? This is one of the parts of the marketing funnel we tend to ignore, which is how do you get your customers, once they've purchased, to come back and spend more? And uh, Richard Shapiro is the founder and president of the Center for Client Retention, and he's going to be talking on August 19th. The, the week after that, we're going to be doing my signature presentation on the five pillars of digital success. Um, some of you had the opportunity to attend that. We're going to do a reprise of it. It's a 90-minute session. Um, and then we're going to do next uh, the five keys to success on Google My Business. Uh, Google My Business is incredibly key for, it's the seven keys, sorry, for local. And I can actually tip my hat there with the TikTok logo because just this morning, um, I got off the line with uh, a head of marketing at TikTok. And we're actually going to be talking about marketing and advertising on TikTok on Wednesday the 9th. Um, and they have invited us to ask our community to send in questions that we'll then submit to that executive as part of an ex Ask Me Anything session. So I wanted to invite you guys now to go ahead and use this link uh, that I just put in the chat and submit your questions to the head of marketing and advertising at TikTok. And then on, April, on September 9th, we're going to have that. I'm expecting uh, a big crowd for it. Um, you know, with that, um, I just wanted to say uh, thank you to Allison and her team. Thank you to Lilia, who's going to be taking a few weeks vacation, richly deserved. Uh, mm -hmm. And thanks to all of you guys for showing up today, for supporting us. We love you. And we'll see you uh, back here at 1230 on August 12th for our graduation celebration. Everybody. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Allison. I really appreciate Bye -bye. it. Bye. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everybody.